problems and the situation that India faced in March, let's imagine traveling in a Mumbai local. Typically, about 500 people travel in a Mumbai local train in one coach. Now, if suppose the trains had been running during the COVID times, this is just a thought experiment, just one person being infected in the coach could have infected 500 other people in the space of just one hour. In contrast, if these 500 people were working from home, as they indeed are, to infect those 500 people, it would take many days. One hour versus many days, 500 people that would infect actually would go and infect many more. This example displays the impact of network effects in the spread of a pandemic. The fact that the size of the population matters, the population density matters, and that is essentially the situation that India faced. And for the first chapter in the economic survey in volume one is about India's policy response, saving lives and livelihoods amidst a once in a century crisis. India's response was guided by research in epidemiology and economics. Nobel Prize winning research by Lars Hansen and Tom Sargent, which I had the privilege of learning from both of them. Their research advocates that when faced with enormous uncertainty, policies must aim to minimize large losses. Now faced with a pandemic, that large loss was loss of human lives. As it is said in the, Maharash, in the, in the Mahabharata, Apadi Pranaraksha hi dharmasya pratham ankuraha. Saving a life that is in jeopardy is the origin of dharma. And that is the principle that guided India's policy response. India recognized that GDP growth will come back, and it certainly has, but human lives will not. India's policy response also derived from the extensive research on epidemiology, especially that looked at the Spanish flu epidemic of 1918 to come up with its policy response. One of the key things that was pointed out was the need for the pandemic curve to be flattened because that gives time for the health and the testing infrastructure to be ramped up. In particular, one of the key learnings from this research was that the pandemic spreads faster in higher and denser populations, and that the intensity of the lockdown matters most at the beginning of the pandemic. A one unit increase in the population density has far greater impact on the spread of the pandemic at the onset of that pandemic compared to later. And this is one of the key reasons, one of the key points of research that guided India's policy response. Therefore, the early intense lockdown, India recognized, not only saves more human lives, but also enables a quicker, better economic recovery. The survey team has done a lot of work to show what could have been versus what, versus what actually happened. What could have been depends on, as I said, population, population density, it depends on the number of elderly people we have in the population. Even though India is a young population, just in absolute numbers, the number of elderly people we have is very large, and in fact, larger than most countries. It depends on the number of tests that are conducted. It depends on the entire demography as well. And so, you know, the survey team has analyzed what could have been versus what was, and that is being displayed in this particular chart where the ex expected cases versus the actual cases is displayed, similarly for deaths as well. Green corresponds to actually the actual cases being lower than the expected cases, while red is the, is, is the opposite. And both on cases and on deaths, India has done really well. India avoided about 37 lakh cases, according to the survey's estimation, and about one lakh deaths through the strategy that it, that it adopted. The same analysis has also been done across states in India. And here as well, 
uh, the, the expected cases and expected deaths has been taken into account. While looking at deaths, the, the health infrastructure also has been taken into account to estimate what could have been. One of the key things that stands out here in terms of under and over performance across states, Maharashtra is the underperformer both in cases and in deaths. In cases, Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat, and Bihar are the overperformers, while on debts, Kerala, Telangana, and Andhra Pradesh are the overperformers. Now, importantly, what we do is to go and relate this to the stringency of the lockdown that was, that was imposed. Uh, we do this not only across all countries, but also across states in India. When we analyze across countries, we find that the intensity of the initial lockdown correlates strongly with the difference in the estimated versus the actual cases across countries. But when we do that across states as well, we see the same pattern where the stringency of the lockdown across states correlates with the cases and the deaths. And for this, the survey team actually has done outstanding amount of work, you know, the team here, in developing an index, stringency lockdown index, for the Indian states. This can be used for future research as well, because this mirrors the Oxford University's index that has been developed across countries. Using this index, that basically we show here that the performance in terms of cases and deaths correlates very strongly with the, uh, with, with, uh, with the stringency of the lockdown. Now, we certainly recognize that correlation does not translate into causality. And that's why the state level uh, analysis that we are doing is very important. Before I come to that, let me also talk about the economic performance. So if we relate the stringency of the lockdown to the contemporaneous effect, in other words, if the lockdown was more stringent in a particular month, what was the impact on the economic indicators in that month? And what was the impact of the stringency of the lockdown in that month on future economic indicators three months later? And what you see is on the left, you see actually a negative correlation, which is the decline contemporaneously. And on the right, you see the positive lag effect, which is the V-shaped relationship, which is the V-shaped recovery that we witnessed in the, in, in the economy. Now, as I was referring to earlier, Correlation does not necessarily mean causality, and that is why the state-level analysis is extremely important. To show the causal impact, we need to show that other factors are not accounting for this correlation, whether it's at the country level or at the state level. Now, one of the key worries, actually, from a cross-country analysis is that it could be Indians have higher immunity than others. And therefore, India actually ended up having much less cases and much less deaths. It could possibly be that the PCT vaccine, you know, that, that all against the pandemic. The environment that we live in here, that is what reduces deaths intrinsically. Or it could be that anything else but the intensity of the lockdown that India did actually accounts for this correlation. The strong correlation of cases and deaths that I showed across states is important in this. I also showed the, the, the V-shaped recovery. Why? Because anything that is peculiar to India, whether it's BCG vaccine, high immunity, the environment that we live in, is common across all states in India. Take a Maharashtra, take a Gujarat, take Karnataka. These are all common across you know, all states in India. So the correlation that we've shown cannot come from anything that is specific or peculiar to India. And that is why these, the, the state level ana analysis controls for several of these other factors that may account for India's performance and therefore actually leads the survey to infer that the lockdown had a causal impact on saving lives and on the economic recovery. In this context, it is also important to keep in mind the intrinsic effect of the pandemic itself. Even without the intense lockdown, for their own safety, individuals would not have gone out anyway. And you know, most of us are still observing many of those precautions. Contact-based service sectors would be 